Today's podcast is brought to you by T-Mobile. Join the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using hashtag hats off for heroes. When you share your photo or video, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. This, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Away we go, everybody. Dave Rothenberg, Ryan Hollins, again in for Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN app. Before we get into all the the reads and the commercials and the sports talk, Ryan Hollins, how how are you? I'm I'm doing much better, brother. I, I, I'm I'm really excited to hear from you, man. I mean, we're BFS, man. You're not getting rid of me, dude. You 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 have found a place in my heart, my man. Well. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> Big smile on my face. <laughs> right, right, you know what all that makes me think about? What does that make you think the about? The Stephen A. Smith Show brought to you by Discover. Get your free Ooh. credit scorecard today, even if you're not a Discover customer. It includes your FICO credit score, and checking your scorecard won't hurt your credit. Learn more at discover.com slash credit scorecard. Limitations apply. You see Roger Federer lost at Wimbledon? Five oh. minutes. Yes. Oh, 13-11 in the fifth. Gosh. Oh, a sad day. Sad day in tennis. Yeah. It is, is a it, day. sad day in tennis or are you happy that somebody else is getting some No, shot? I mean, he, he is iconic. This is a guy that at 36 years old is doing the stuff we've never, never seen before in the men's game and he's playing at a, an unbelievable level and he, uh, he gets bounced in five sets. He won the first two sets over Kevin Anderson, lost the next three and listen to this. 268. Um, Grand Slam events he's been in where he's led two sets to none, right? He was 266 and two. Oh. He's now 266 and three after leading two <laughs> sets to none. <laughs> I mean, even in that loss, your hat has to go off for that type of, that type of dominance in, in, in any sport. And, and, and I mean, like, like tennis is a, have you, have you play, I'm assuming you played tennis. The excitement why, that you you're, have. You're, you're I feel like why, you have some why is tennis that such genes. an assumption for you? You have a different type of ex- excitement when it comes to I tennis. I do love tennis. Yeah, I grew up I playing. I like it. No. I, okay. There you go. There you go. It all comes out. No, I'm no, not no. transparent. No. Huh? I did. I grew up playing. <laughs> so when I tell you you're wrong, you're not – remember that statement. You just said you're not transparent. So I know when you're being biased or as you would say uh, – what, what, what was your uh, deal? Your, uh, uh, I'll figure. You'll say it again. You'll say it again. Whenever you want to discredit anything, I want to say. All right. Not so, quite sure what you're talking about, but I, I do know about this. Time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts at all. Let's let's go NBA. Uh, we're going to talk to Mike Rodak, uh, covers the Buffalo Bills, in about 10 minutes from right now and find out the latest of where we are with LaShawn McCoy. Because the story, you know, we, we find little sprinklings, but we want to really know exactly what's going on and what the league is doing, what the Bills are doing. So Mike Rodak will join us in about 10 minutes to help us break that down. We'll start at the NBA. Um, Jeff Van Gundy had an interesting suggestion, and I, and I think this is an interesting place to jump off for us today. Um, a cap, which is a hard cap of $120 million, which makes it much more difficult for the super team to easily come together and be a super team moving forward. I'm trying to figure out when Jeff Van Gundy became this villain, this anti-player, this this throwback, this this stir of nonsense. The one well, thing why, why is it nonsensical? Have, we play in a players' league. Guys finally have rights now. Guys finally have opportunities to make money. Guys actually have freedoms. They have choices to go and play where they want to play and join up. They have control over their lives. And Van Gundy, say, he's trying to take control away. If, no, I, if, what, if he's, what he's James saying is that, play, no. what he's saying is that super but, teams are not fun for the game. And this is see, a way to eliminate. Originally, he's not saying no, let's, no. let's eliminate. Let's that eliminate what guys he's getting paid a lot of money. What else do you think a hard cap is going to do? Because that's going to make teams not be able to pay guys, and you won't be able to keep guys under contract. I get it. While you may avoid some of these super teams being built. Players are not going to make the same money, and a team is going to be stuck not be going being able to pay a guy. So if you give a hard cap, all these teams that have gone over the cap, right, yep. including the Denver Nuggets. So we're just talking when it's hard cap. The Denver Nuggets, would you call that a super team? Not at all. Not even close, and they're over the cap. 
So what happens is it directly takes money away from the players in which they have earned. There's so much money literally swirling around the NBA that players need to make more and more. I get it. We all hear and see 300, you know, 150 million, 60 million. Guess what? Those owners make billions. They make a lot more because it's somebody that signs those checks. I, I so get those it, but, but you, you, do, you think, no. do you think that the Warriors and their dominance and got, the fact that Durant goes there and Cousins goes there is good for the NBA? I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And 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 how would I how would I put this? Boogie Cousins right now on paper, straight up, it's more of a a risk to the Warriors than a reward. For one, you get a guy who's likely going to have to sit out half, if not a full percentage of the season next year. The Warriors play fast. Boogie Cousins coming off of a torn Achilles is a slower type of player. And then you got to make sure this guy is on his P's and Q's in the locker room. And I, and he's done a lot, and I played with him, and Boogie's one of the most enjoyable personalities that I've played with and I've been around, even though we won't lie, he has his quirks. He's made his share of mistakes in the league, okay? But there are more risk in that move than positives right now. And it's safe to say they don't need Boogie Cousins. It was this was a this was a move from the player saying we want to get you and they pay five point one year five point three million dollars so everyone's saying that Boogie makes them the super super it doesn't they were super there's team more, before he went risk. there but you can't you can't deny that exactly. the guys you can't deny first of all they were a super team before he went there they were they were elite Durant went there now they're a super team now you add Cousins who maybe he won't be what he he used to be. But you can't deny the fact that if he somehow gets back to that, it makes them even even a scarier team. There's more risk. There's ninety percent. What's the risk, risk versus What's the ten percent reward in that? He could mess. Let, and I'm going to speak. I'm going to I'm going to be the negative Nancy here. You said the risk. He could ruin your locker room. And the Warriors are that good that if you ruin the locker room from the inside, that's the only way they're going to lose. Fair to say. Right, hundred percent agreed. But I the think one that that thing team that is makes too- them special. Hold on, no, you asked me for the negatives. They play fast. They're the fastest playing team in the league. They spread you out. They shoot threes and they run. Boogie is already a slower player, even though he stretched his re- range out to the three point line. You would want him doing his damage inside. He slows down your pace when you're playing against Golden State. After about one or two quarters of it, your hands are on your knees and you're huffing and puffing and trying to figure out how to catch up with the Warriors. Boogie Cousins slows you down. That's a pace that you would love and want to play against. Now that becomes a mismatch problem. And then he's coming off of a torn Achilles. You're not even going to have him in the lineup. So how do you say that it, that it helps or it doesn't help? You just brought more negative attention. Even if to you a don't team add really Boogie Cousins, you're clearly the best team in the attention. NBA. You just you just walk no, to no. another and, and NBA I, and final. And I say that I, I want to clarify. I said that to give you the class half empty. Okay, and I say there's so much more risk in that way. Oh no, it's a super. Oh, oh no, my name is Dave. I don't want to see Boogie Cousins. Oh no, guess what? Nobody else offered him. Nobody else offered him. So you want the guy to just, just, just obviously you, you thought he was something, uh, more than what he was because of his name. But obviously NBA teams and execs didn't feel the same way. So Boogie took control of his own narrative. I, I want to know what really the problem with that is. Why can't he be happy? This guy's going to have a, he's going to re, he's going to rehab and get a, a championship potentially. Okay. So, but to throw out, and like I said, there's that 10% chance that he steps in, he gets healthy, he's back. There's more against Boogie and the Warriors work. But they don't even need him, with Ryan. Him right if, now. He, if he's not even good, no, they're still going to win I, a championship. Agreed, brother. Agreed. But there's more negatives right now than positives. And when you bring in a polarizing name, when you bring in a huge name, that adds more to the fire. If you thought they were villains already, they're all in with this villain thing. Listen, I just don't like the fact that I can tell you a year out who's going to win the championship. I don't think I don't think it's good for the sport, and and I think it's time. And and Adam Silver uh, said similar last night that it's it's time to start to to look to change this. And and there, there's there's great teams, and that's fine. But when you have one team realistically that can win the whole thing, and you have all these teams that are that are dreadful, I think you have a broken system in the NBA right now. I can't believe I cannot believe the hypocrisy from you right now. How so? I, I cannot believe the hypocrisy. The biggest problem that people have with the Golden State Warriors is that it's not their team. 
that it's not the Lakers, that it's not the Knicks, that it's not the Rockets, that it's not one of those other teams. That's the biggest problem. So you feel great about... L.A. had about... no problem. Hold, hold on. Hear this, hear this, brother. Go ahead. L.A. had no problem when it was the Showtime Lakers running things, when they had Shaq and Kobe. You heard the same complaints. New York, I got to think to when you guys were actually dominant, but I know one thing about your hypocrisy right now. You wouldn't be complaining if this was the Knicks. You would not. You would not. You would not. I, I can't even envision living in a world where that was the case, so I, I can't answer that. Straight Talk Wireless nationwide <laughs> coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. But here's the point. They were built genuinely, oh right? Draymond gosh. Green drafted Clay Thompson, Seth Curry. No issue. They were great. I had no problem with that. My yes, issue, sir. and I don't know how yes, you sir. feel about it, is Kevin Durant. Kevin oh. Durant couldn't beat them, so then just decided, I can't beat them. You know what I'll do? I'll join them. Let me ask right? you. Let, let, let me. I, I know you're going to say I'm dancing around. I, for one, one, I have no problem with what Kevin Durant did. You played pickup basketball, right? It's safe to say most of us have played pickup basketball, right? I think everyone has played pickup right? basketball. Yes, pickup basketball. Now, when you go to the park, have you ever brought a ringer to the park? Have you ever brought a really good player to the park? Have you ever tried to get on a team that was the winning team? Have you wanted to play with good players at the park? Okay. I say that to say, if all of us had that opportunity that Kevin Durant had, we all joined the Warriors the exact same way. Safe to say, Kevin Durant had exhausted every option that he had with the Thunder. He stepped into free agency, and if you want to diagnose the Oklahoma City Thunder, they were a team an organization that essentially, I don't want to say gave up on winning, but they started making moves for the future. Getting rid of Serge Ibaka, trading hard. We can dole down the list. So why can't he go to a place where he could win if that was the only thing that cements his legacy, the only cloud, dark cloud over his head, so that he doesn't end up being Charles Barkley? Why, why don't well, we do like, this? What why, is don't your we, why don't we put it on the back burner for now? And get to it later and bring in Mike Rodak, ESPN writer who covers the Buffalo Bills. And there is a, a whole heck of a lot going on with the Bills and, and LaShawn McCoy right now. Mike, we appreciate a couple minutes today on ESPN Radio. Thanks, buddy. No problem. Just another slow week in the middle oh, yeah. of the NFL offseason. A- absolutely. And you got the Jerry <laughs> Richardson statue and the, and the Kime uh, DUI and uh, Bill Bidwell or, or Michael Bidwell coming out and uh, saying things about the new uh, Supreme Court justice that's nominated. So a lot going on uh, in the NFL, but nothing bigger than LaShawn McCoy. So we, we before we speak about it and potentially incorrectly, let's give you the floor and tell us where are we with this investigation into this woman and into LaShawn McCoy. Right. So as of this morning, uh, McCoy has hired one of the prominent defense attorneys in Atlanta, a man by the name of Don Samuel, who has represented a lot of uh, high profile people over the years. So it really appears that that side is gearing up for a legal battle that may come here. Although I checked in with the district attorney's office down in Fulton County, Georgia, and as of right now, they're not even commenting. So it seems like we're still a little ways away from any possible charges being being filed or potentially not filed in this case, and also no new word from police as well as far as their investigation or any suspects about this home invasion that took place uh, yesterday morning, Tuesday morning, at McCoy's home outside of Atlanta, uh, where his ex-girlfriend's attorney say she was living, and they say that she was attacked uh, by a male assailant and uh, she went to the hospital as a result of those injuries. But we don't know who the suspect is in this case. And, in fact, people associated with LaShawn McCoy have insisted that he was in Miami at the time, and everything that he has put on social media also suggests that he has been in Miami. So um, I don't know if there's a huge question about whether it was LaShawn McCoy himself. I don't think many people are suggesting that it is, but I think the bigger question for investigators and for the NFL is whether he was involved in somehow this going down. Now, I want to ask you. Let me let me fast forward a little, and we don't want to we don't want to state anything that we don't know right now. But if as you've seen as a record through the NFL, at some point do they do they allow Lashawn to play football, or does he have to hold out and wait until there's a 
uh, some type of a ruling. I, and, and, and I really assume it. And let me ask you, is this much further than the NFL's – like out of the NFL's hands? Because this is actually a, a, a potential criminal case, and there's so many moving parties here. So w- what has been the track record of the NFL in similar stances? Well, it hasn't been completely consistent. In some cases, players have been put on the commissioner's exempt list. And in some cases, they haven't. And they've been allowed to play until there's been some resolution – uh, legally for that player. Um, the new conduct policy that came out, I believe, two years ago now, does stipulate that in cases of violent crimes, a player could be put on the exempt list even before charges are filed if the NFL's investigation into it is not complete. So right now I think it's a question of would this fall under that category of a violent crime if um, – if he's being investigated potentially for a conspiracy, let's say. We don't know that for sure, but hypothetically, if he was being investigated for a conspiracy, would that trigger the exempt list? We don't know that yet. Um, I think that's probably something the NFL, as they go through their investigation, we're only basically 24 hours into it right now, they're going to have to figure out because the Bills start training camp two weeks from tomorrow. And... Obviously, I think you'd want some sort of a resolution before he's on the practice field for the Bills, before all the cameras are there, and before you might have to answer questions. So um, I'd say there's probably a two-week timetable there for, for some clarity about his status, but legally this is more than likely going to take longer than that. Mike Rodak joining us here ESPN Radio. Rothenberg and Holland's in for Stephen A. Uh, obviously, the police are very much involved in this case. Is the NFL conducting their own investigation, Mike, or are they kind of piggybacking on, on what the authorities find right now? Well, all we know so far is really what the NFL has said, which is they're reviewing the matter, um, which is vague. But we do know from from history that they do have their own concurrent investigations that often happen alongside whatever legal investigations, whatever criminal investigations may be going on from authorities, from police. So um, the NFL really hasn't given anything more than that statement so far, um, but I think it's safe to assume that they have people looking into it themselves. And as we've seen in the past, the NFL can come to its own conclusions through its investigations that may be different than the conclusions that were drawn by police. Real quick, can you clarify, just so we're all clear, what the, and and might I add, the allegations from both parties are? We saw the photo, we saw uh, LaShawn's statements, but what the uh, allegations from both sides are, what what the, the, at least for now, the stories, stories are, we're clarifying these are just stories and initial statements. Exactly, and and this really is is multi-layered. So essentially it was the Instagram post that the friend of the victim posted yesterday morning that accused McCoy of uh, causing her bodily harm, didn't say directly or indirectly, and also accused him of uh, child abuse, of uh, animal cruelty, and of performance-enhancing drug use as well. So a lot there for the NFL to unpack and to look into, but really unsubstantiated as far as you know, a simple Instagram post is. You can't prove very much off of that. But it was connected to this, uh, home invasion that took place Tuesday morning at a house that we know was owned by McCoy outside of Atlanta. And the attorneys for the victim have said it was a woman named Alicia Corden, who was the ex-girlfriend or is the ex-girlfriend of LaShawn McCoy, who was living there. And we do know that through uh, court filings the past couple months that he has been trying to evict her from that home. Uh, so those are really the bare details right now that we know. And it, it's again, it's going to take, I, I think, some investigation, both from the authorities and from the NFL to figure out if LaShawn McCoy had any role whatsoever in that home invasion or if he you know, completely had nothing to do with it. Mike, it's an unbelievable story and we look forward to uh, finding out more as we move forward here. Thanks for uh, updating us a little bit here and we appreciate it. a couple minutes. You got it, guys. Thank it, you. All right, good stuff. That's uh, Mike Rodak, uh, covers the Bills for ESPN. I'm sure you didn't think you'd be dealing with this story right now. Um, regardless of whether LaShawn McCoy is involved, this is a, a horrendous, horrendous story. And if he is involved, obviously it it um, makes matters even worse for the NFL and for LaShawn McCoy. But, I mean, I'm sure you saw the photos of this uh, this woman after the home invasion. She, she looked um, absolutely horrendous. Re- regardless in which, that, that's horrendous. Is that, and as a father... Uh, as a son, as a, as a brother, 
Uh, I, I'm disgusted. Uh, any, any time I, I, I see something like that. So, um, hopefully those, those wounds heal. And I'm not just talking about the physical ones. I'm talking about the emotional ones. Uh, and this is, this is honestly a, a, a terrible, uh, terrible situation at hand. Certainly is. All right. We, uh, get back into the NBA. 888 say ESPN. 888 3776. Uh, I don't love the super team in the NBA. Sounds like Ryan is is much more on board. <laughs> oh, am I am I wrong? Are you, you not? You like it, right? I love it. I love player freedom, wouldn't you? Wouldn't he, you? he he loves you, you, the Golden State dominance. I'm turned off by the Golden State dominance. We will discuss that. Eight 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 say ESPN. Eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. But before we go, Ryan, before you hit the mm, road for any mm, vacation this uh-oh. summer, you visit GNC. All right, you need to stay healthy, and GNC has the highest quality solutions and supplements in the industry. GNC brand products pass up to 150 quality checks. You can be sure you're getting the best prices with GNC's price match guarantee. GNC doesn't just match prices. They'll beat them by a buck or try something new. If it's not right for you, return it for a full refund. You heard right, a full refund. This summer, live well with GNC. Exclusions do apply. See an associate or GNC.com for Details. We continue with the NBA 888 say ESPN 888-729-3776. Do you like, are you in favor of a hard cap which would slow down the super teams or do you like where the NBA is headed? We discuss it next. ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Hi, I'm Bryce Harper. Join me and the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using T-Mobile's hashtag Hats Off for Heroes. When you share your photo or video with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. So America, keep posting with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes and T-Mobile will keep giving. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Official licensee of Major League Baseball Players Association. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. It is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Dave Rothenberg and Ryan Hollins having fun all week long. That's a like clown. We are balloons. It's fun. I, 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 well, I'm enjoying myself. I just hope every, the the listeners can enjoy your hypocrisy. You know, everybody in New you're just upsetting the rest of the world, other than New Yorkers. You're such a new. You're so New York biased in everything we say. I hope that they can they can sift through this the the New Yorker in you. Gosh. First of all, the New Yorker in me bleeds bleeds, you know, red, white, and blue. I mean, I'm a New Yorker <laughs> through and through. But but how is it a bias? Because it, 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 you and this, oh, I don't like Golden State. If those were the Knicks, and I get you say it's not even fathomable, you would be you you could yeah, we got the rant. We I, got the more than you. You I guys will be it. screaming from the Empire State Building about how good the Knicks are and, and how legendary. Don't get me started on be, that Empire oh, State Building. I'm very unhappy with that building, by the way. Oh my! God. You want to know why? Why? They, they they plastered themselves in green and white when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's disgraceful, right? I mean, it's a New York oh, landmark. That is. That is. That is. That, 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 disgusting. That, 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 but I, this is what I wanted to throw out to you. This was my, t- you know, if you, if you guys are listening, I had a tease today before the break, and I said only he. I don't know how the listeners, but I said, not liking a super team is saying that Dave Rothenberg and Ryan Hollins can't work together. Super team. Who says they don't want to see that? These are super teams. I just, so that's like saying we can't work together. Let's hard cap it. Let's hard cap these guys, okay? So they you can't think it's work good together. for the game? We okay, don't want to see Even them. if you like it as a Warriors fan, or even if you like it for greatness in the NBA, it it. Eliminates a lot of the excitement for me for the regular season because I don't. It doesn't matter what what LeBron and Cleveland did. It didn't matter what uh, Golden State did. They were going to wind up the, back into the uh, into the NBA Finals, so they can take their foot off the accelerator. You saw Popovich do it years ago, where they would rest guys, you know, throughout the season just to be fresh for the postseason. I just there's so many teams that are irrelevant in the NBA. It doesn't make up for it that there are a couple of teams that are very very good. At least for me, you cannot expect that next year the finals will be swept. You can't expect 
that LeBron James will somehow take a, 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 the group of me, you, Nuno, John, and, and, and Kat, okay, to the NBA Finals. Okay, you, you, LeBron is in the on the West Coast now. You cannot expect to see that. You can't say that you didn't like to see what Houston did and the way that they challenged. You can't say that we didn't have an absolutely prolific second round of the playoffs. Excuse me, finals, conference finals of the playoffs. It's not going to happen like that again. Kyrie and Gordon will not miss the year. Boston will challenge yeah, Boston Golden and State. Golden State. I can tell you right now who's in the NBA Finals. Boston and Golden State. You couldn't do that with Shaq and Kobe? You couldn't do that with Shaq and You couldn't do that with Magic? You couldn't do that with Bird Celtics? Ma- Magic, they didn't you go could, every year. We didn't. Magic lost whoa, 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 the Rockets whoa, whoa, whoa. a couple times. When there was a back and forth, between Boston, Kevin Garnett, the big three, and the Los Angeles Lakers, Kobe Bryant, Gasol, and company, whether it went back and forth, you knew who was going to the finals. So you tell me just because it was L.A. and Boston, it's okay with you, but now that the Golden State Warriors, Oakland actually has a good, actually the greatest basketball team of all time because there's no one who can beat that team, you tell me that it's bad for basketball? This hypocrisy. I don't, I don't, I, I you're just mad. You're jealous. I'll t- I'm not jealous. I didn't have an issue until Durant's on there. Now so Durant jealous. goes there. Now Cousins goes there. It just feels very unfair to me. And it, and it's not as exciting as, as it would be. Listen, saying. the commissioner knows there's an issue. I had to talk with the commissioner. So while, while you're going out to throw the commissioner has an issue, we just want to know why you can't appreciate greatness. Why we can't appreciate what LeBron James did. Why we can't appreciate Golden State is the greatest team of all time just because they're not just, I had to talk with, I had to talk with them. And what he said? You still watched? You still watched? I'm a sports fan. Of course I'm going to watch. It's just good. Were you, were you glued to hey, your look, television nobody game four of the NBA finals? Okay. Were you glued to it? Nobody, we're not denying nobody wanted to see a sweep. I fell asleep. Nobody wants to see the sweep. Nobody wants to see Jr. make his mistake and LeBron point to him. And it is what it is. It won't happen again. It was a fluke. A granite Golden State wins. They're great. Shaq and Kobe, you knew they were going to be NBA champs the next year. What was the surprise there? Phil, Shaq, Kobe, it was going to happen. Michael Jordan, he was going to win. Okay, the Utah Jazz gave us a, a little excitement. But at the end of the day, Michael was going to beat Utah every year. Okay? Just because it, just because it wasn't the sweep, you knew what was happening, Dave. I, I, I guess my issue with ESPN Radio presented by Progressive Home issue? Insurance, getting a quote is easier than ever. Is that when they were put together generically, I didn't have an issue. When they're put together and it's free agent signings, is where I have more of an issue. Let's find out what people have to say, shall we? Eight 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 say ESPN eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Let's go to uh, Mark in Iowa. Mark, you're on ESPN Radio. Hello. Hello, Mark. Hi. Hey, hey, I'm on your side here. I do not like the super teams. In the 80s, tell me if major free agent the Celtics signed. They didn't. No. The Lakers didn't. They drafted well, and that's how they formed their teams. Or they made great trades. I like to see more trades being made, maybe. Or if you do sign a major free agent, you give up three number one draft picks. Then we see the the other teams that are losing these great players, they'll be more balanced, I think. And I am a Celtic fan, by the way. And you have a great like team. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but this is a, so Celtic, every, this is a Celtics know, fan that's turned off by the way the process is. It shows you something, doesn't no, it? I, You know what, Dave? I actually really love that call. That was an amazing, educated point because there is a difference I get when you draft and when you trade. But we live in a different era in which we don't put labels and put guys in boxes and where if, if you want it, LeBron, you want to live in Miami or Durant, you want to play in Golden State. This is freedom. Don't look at this as players. What if I told you you had to eat, sleep, and die in a certain place and because you were talented, even more so, you couldn't go and explore your options. That's no different than what Kevin Durant did for himself and his family. Don't forget the man has a family. You know, and, and, and I get what you want to say from the sport, but you can't tell me, even though Charles Barkley is going to tell you otherwise, that he would not sleep better at night with an NBA championship. And Kevin Durant, at 27, 28 years of age, knows that tomorrow is in progress. Two, three years ago, before the championship, the guy missed the season with a broken foot. When you look at your life at hand, life with the championship, 
life without a championship. How can we be upset at somebody for doing that? We get to see tandems and duos that we could never see in the past that guys never thought would be possible. I understand the old school mentality of loyalty. I will live and die in one place and I'll do this and this is my team and my fanship. Well, tell the teams that because they don't have too much loyalty. They don't care too much about players. So now players have the opportunity to take their lives into their own hands. Dave, wouldn't you want to team up with Ryan Hollins, make a super team? If you had the choice, or do you live the rest of your life not knowing, Dave? Oh, this is a lot, a lot of drama for me. I don't know right now. I'd have to wrap my head around that, Ryan. It is oh! attra- <laughs> it's an attractive <laughs> offer, but I have loyalties here in, in New York. Chris in Indiana. Oh Chris, you're gosh. on ESPN Radio. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Hey, what's going on? I, I, I just wanted to say, I thought the uh, the Super Team era would have been short-lived after the Miami, LeBron, Wade, and Bosch deal. But I think what happened was Stephen A. Smith's uh, sources are so good. When he found out where Kevin Durant wanted to go before Kevin Durant released that information, I think it changed Kevin Durant's mind. I thought Kevin Durant was thinking about Washington, was thinking about L.A. But when Stephen A. Smith came out and said what he said before the news broke, it, it upset Kevin Durant, and I think he did it out of spite. And I think I blame it all on Stephen A. Smith. I you, think, know you, think that a guy, you think that a guy changed the entire complexion of his life, his family, where he's going to live out of spite for a a, a – member of the media. I really do. I, I do. I think he was so upset that, you know, some, he, Stephen A. Smith found out some information that he didn't want anyone to find out. So he said, hey, he doesn't, nobody expect me to go to Golden State. I'm going to go to Golden State. I think he would have been in Washington or he would have been in L.A. That's just my opinion. I just want to know, have you guys ever heard anyone else say that before? No, and I, I, think, I, think, I, think, that's pre- I think that's preposterous. It's not, it's not preposterous because it's preposterous. when something that hits national media, I will tell you as a former player, we read the tweets, we see the narratives, we see what is said. You gotta think of a guy also, and, and I don't want to blame that on Stephen A, but guess what? The media does sway perception. They do, they do sway things. There's a reason why a guy like Kevin Durant wanted to go out and essentially chase and obtain a ring. You gotta think, Jerry West was also very instrumental in that saying, hey, we can play comfortable basketball. It's a good fit. You don't have to beat your head against the wall every time you play the game. There's a flow. There's an art yeah, to basketball. Yeah, I buy into so, that. I don't buy into the fact that the guy out of spite didn't go where it was reported that it was going to go. Uh, I won't say out, out of spite, spite but I, 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 do, I do not take the factor out of the national media and the fans and the narratives and that fans, I, I guess you're your own worst enemy because if Kevin Durant never got a ring, you're not saying his name. If Kevin Durant never got that ring, you're not saying or flirting with the idea of him being the the the, I don't, the, the idea that he's better than LeBron James. When he hit got that first MVP, people had the audacity out of their mouths to say that Kevin Durant is better than LeBron James. And I'm not saying that KD's not a bad man, but you got to understand that only comes with the glow and the glitz and the glamour of a championship. When you go to a large market, when you go to a winning team, it changes the trajectory of your career. All right, sports Listen, fans and Katie, Ryan oh, Hollins. Uh, the Katie. sun is shining. The temps are rising. Summer's officially here. Grab your friends. Blast some tunes. Ignite those coals because weather like this waits for no one. Kingsford charcoal. Start something. If I ask you a question now, can you not answer it and answer it upon our return? <laughs> can you do that? You think you're capable of that, Ryan? <laughs> It depends what you say. It, it you wouldn't you, you wouldn't say. enjoy the NBA better if the Warriors were Curry, Thompson, Draymond, the Rockets were currently what they are, Harden and Paul, and the Thunder was Durant and Westbrook. If he never left, look, man. Okay, see, no, 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 no. You I'll promised you, you were going to wait. You guaranteed me you were going to wait. Ah. 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. It's a squeaking Ryan Hollins. This is Dave good Rothenberg one. with this you. Is a good ESPN one. Radio and the ESPN <laughs> app. Allie's mom knew she had a strong kick even back in the womb. And from then on, Allie was always kicking a ball and saying she was going to play pro soccer. And one day, while she was kicking a ball against a wall, her skills drew even more attention. Her boss said, 
Could you please stop that and get me those quarterly numbers I asked for? Turns out Allie just wasn't that good a talker. But she was a good accountant. That's why she switched to GEICO. She knew they could save her a bunch of money on car insurance. And she sure wasn't ever going to make that pro soccer money. No, sir. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! It is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Dave Rothenberg and Ryan Hollins, a dynamic duo on ESPN Radio and the ESPN Woo. app. Ryan, when's the last time you were at the game or, or concert? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Last time I was at a game or concert, uh, does playing uh, change anything? Does that do, do I count as playing or does, Not, do would, I have would to Would you need going? to go to vividseats.com slash ESPN today for your exclusive discount offer if you were playing? Probably not. So you got to go and sit in the crowd. Vivid Seats, the official ticket partner <laughs> of ESPN. Yeah. No, it's been a while. It's been a while, my brother. It's been a while. Vivid seats. I am looking for some tickets. I am no. looking for some tickets, though. I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to scalp something to get into the ESPYs, man. Ryan Hollins, I've I'm, I'm, I'm got to find my way into these awards, you're, man. You're, you're Ryan Hollins, for God's sakes. If you just tell them you want to go, they'll, you'll be There's sitting up reason. there with, like, Kobe. It'll be, Kobe, it'll be Ryan Hollins, Peyton Manning, um, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal. I think that would be, like, the force. S- s- something tells me it's not going down just <laughs> like that. If I scalp some, I, that's the one perk of being seven feet. When I show up... I look like I'm supposed to be there. You know, there's other guys. I, I talked with Beno Ujo, uh, Udo, uh, my guy. Um, and he's like, uh, yeah, nobody notices me. You know, I played 12 seasons in the NBA. Nobody noticed. I said, I said, that's the, it's the gift and the curse because I can't walk around anywhere with someone just go, you gotta be somebody. You gotta be somebody. No, I'm nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm a regular Joe, but you know, at, at, at places like that, I look like I belong. It's, it's, it, that's the one time it helps. We'll get you tickets to the ESPYs. 888-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Discussing super teams. Do you like them or you're opposed to them? Ryan loves it. I don't like it. Matt and Queens, you're on ESPN Radio. How's it going, guys? Good afternoon. Good. Go ahead. Hey, hey what's so going I on, brother? Because, what's going on? I called because I wanted to argue with Ryan Hollins and back up my man, uh, Rothenberg, before anything, to let you know, yes, I am a New York Giants fan and a New York Knicks fan, to let you know off the bat about that. See, Matt, Matt is a good man, Ryan. Continue. <laughs> so, about that, so, yeah, when you're telling me, like, you know, Jordan was going to beat the Utah Jazz every time, yeah, you knew that, but he didn't do it with, like, the starting five of the All-Stars of the West. Now, I don't have anything against with all of the Golden State players, but you can't tell me, Ryan, that you thought it was going to be fun to watch, you know, Jordan, Bird, and you know, and, and Magic Johnson get together on the same team, would you? Well, these are different eras. Obviously, things have changed, and as we progress forward, things always get bigger and better. We get to see some tandems that we want. You can't tell me that you wouldn't have wanted to see Mac and Magic and Jordan potential. I get it as a as a Knickerbocker, as a, those guys. You got your integrity, and and you, we looked at it. Michael Jordan wasn't a Nick; he was the rival, and you know Reggie Miller was the enemy. I get it. We grew up with those assumptions, but now. A different day and age. That's why you love all-star teams. You love these concepts. These ideas of never was or not to have a chance, they actually have a chance to happen. And you get to see your favorite players together while they're in their primes of their careers. So why can't we enjoy that? I'll ask that back to you. Why can't we en- just enjoy what we're no, you, seeing? You, you, you can enjoy it as much as you want, but I think for the most, especially like as basketball purist, I guess the game is definitely a lot has changed. But I think it's more as a basketball purist like a guy like myself – I, you know, I was more fun to watch like Allen Iverson bring this team to the finals and get your one win, even though they were a huge underdog in the finals. It was more fun to watch. Like, it's like when you mentioned earlier, uh, Rothenberg, I would, it would be a lot more fun to see like Clay, Curry, and Draymond against what, you know, uh, when Durant was on the Thunder. It would be a lot more fun to see these actual superstars take this team to, you know, to make everybody better around them. As opposed to all these great guys, like, all right, well, I guess we got to get together now. I guess we all got to form together because uh, there's no way that we could just compete because now it's not so much the NBA. It's just Golden State versus everybody you else, wouldn't, you know? May I may I ask, you wouldn't be excited to see Allen Iverson join up with Jason Kidd in that process? You would be happy because AI would have some help. He may have had a ring behind his name. And I'm, I, I mean, Jason Kidd's what a random name, but you can't tell me we wouldn't have been excited to no. see another piece fit with AI and compliment well, what he does. Well, of course, to have another piece of, another piece of AI, I would agree with that. I mean, like, AI brought Eric Snow to the finals, and who's Eric Snow? 
ESPN and everything. But of course, to see another piece, but <laughs> Golden State got five. But they got five. They, those guys are each arguably one of the best players at their position. Like I, one of my favorite teams was Detroit Pistons when they had Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, you know, uh, Tayshaun. Yeah, Chauncey Ben Wallace. Because, absolutely, that was a terrific right. basketball team. We, yeah, we got to run it. Guys. Thanks for the phone call. Unfortunately, we got we got to go. Eight 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 say ESPN eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Now listen, I. I I appreciate the greatness of Golden State. For me, it would be a more enticing scenario if Kevin Durant was on, still on Oklahoma City or assigned to play with a, a different team. He had two or three really elite teams in the Western Conference. So we'll continue the conversation. I got a question for you. We, we don't have time for questions. I got a, qu- I got a real we, it's, question It's that for question you. time. Okay. You save your question. We'll get uh, to it in about six uh, minutes. 888-SAY-ESPN-888-729-3776. Uh, uh, Golf admits... The NFL is king. We'll explain that next. ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Today's podcast is brought to you by T-Mobile. Join the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using hashtag hats off for heroes. When you share your photo or video, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. For two of the Stephen A. Smith Show, Dave Rothenberg and Ryan Hollins. Very busy time of uh, the sports day, Ryan. You got two men's quarterfinals, Wimbledon, going on. And you got England, Croatia about to kick off from Russia. Let's go Croatia. Why Croatia? Why rooting for the Croat? Team Croatia. Yeah. Because I, I'm, a, I'm Team Croatia right now, man. Tell me team one Croatia. thing that's ever come out of Croatia. Is this, are we, are we really doing I'm just, this? I'm just asking for one, are we one really, thing. Are we one, really one, doing one this? Why? Per, one thing, one person. <laughs> give me one thing that's ever come out of Croatia. I got some family with some Croatian ties, man. Team Croatia, man. My my man, my man Goran Bozic, man. My 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 my, my there you go. Hand, man. Goran I, Bozic. I can't pull. I can't pull for my fam. Golly, come on, man. Goran Bozic saves you your argument here. ESPN Radio presented by Progressive else. Insurance: cars, homes, <laughs> boats, motorcycles, RVs, and more at Progressive. dot com. All right. The other day, you and I had the discussion, which um, I thought you really. Really soiled yourself during, but but regardless, um, that you th- say the the NBA is the most popular sport in uh, in this country, right? I said NFL. Clearly, you said NBA, right? Clearly, okay. Cle- clearly, clearly. All right. Well, well, golf is saying um, we don't want any part of the NFL. Golf has moved up their entire season schedule to be done by the start of football in September. What say you about that, my friend? I'm not even referring to golf as a sport. <laughs> what, what, golf regardless of whether Woods. golf is a sport or not, golf is they Tiger, don't want to go head-to-head head with the powers that is the NFL. I'm not worried about the, the golf. I, I refuse. We're not talking about golf competing with any – we're not even going to talk about golf competing with baseball, okay? The only person who watches golf are golfers. There are no recreational golf watching people unless love if you want to see the what Tiger Woods of golf, did that People day. love it. Come on, the U.S. Open, the Masters, we'll people are glued to the Masters. The PGA, Father's Day, the whole thing, they absolutely adore golf. Name me one person who would be glued to golf that doesn't play golf. You can't. You won't find Oh, no. One. You're, you're, you're I dare somebody to call wrong. in and tell me that they would watch golf if they're not a golfer. No, that's not true. Stop it. That's not true. People or, enjoy or golf. I'll watch, a, I'll watch a major. I'll watch the, 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 the final day of a major. My point is this. No, you it won't. doesn't even matter whether no, you golf won't. is. I, I will. Golf, and you golf. No, I, you golf I, I, I don't, you don't golf count. at all. I don't golf at all. Stop it. At all. No. The putting range is golf for me. Else. Mini golf is oh, golf for me. I don't, I don't golf gosh. at all. Let me just say, and, let me explain my point. You watch without to you. Tiger? Uh, I'm not even a Tiger guy. Uh, I think he adds to it. I think he makes it more exciting because Tiger is oh. the guy. <laughs> Tiger is the guy that's polarizing. I think any sport needs polarizing. Any sport needs the Cowboys. Any sport needs the Warriors. Any sport needs Michael okay. Jordan. You need polarizing. Agreed. And the best thing about Agreed. Tiger is you either love him or you can't stand him. Right? Mm. 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 I'm, I'm just mm because I'm agreeing. Go ahead. Finish, brother. Come on. Keep going. 
All right. So my, my point was this about the golf. The golf looks at the NFL and says, this is a juggernaut. This is a Tyrannosaurus Rex modern day. Even though there's this, this belief that ratings are down, I don't even think they're really down. The thing is dynamic. It's everyone wants to watch it. Everyone is involved in fantasy. Everyone wants to watch Sunday afternoon, Monday night, Sunday night. Golf sees that and says, instead of running our season through September, and having important events go toe to toe with the NFL, let's move in a different direction and back the schedule up so that it's done by the end of August. That's that's reverence to the NFL, isn't it? No, it's not. If you think this is going to help your little NFL case, no, 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 and no, no, no one is worried about the NFL to that extent. And if you want to refer as golf. Golf is the barometer? Now, if you told me baseball changed, if you told me there was a, another sport, even the XFL had to avoid, I mean, give me something else. Like, golf? No. But no. doesn't it say something to you that golf doesn't want to go argument. toe-to-toe? In, it doesn't say anything you to you that golf doesn't yourself? want any part of going toe-to-toe with this? You you just told everybody that the, the numbers are down. Significantly down. Uh, the NBA is rising, and you contradict yourself in the middle of your nonsense. I didn't contradict you're myself at else, all. Dave. The the NBA is not in the same Dave stratosphere as the else. NFL. Ryan, you need a hug. Hey, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm, I'm not in. I'm not in. This is a sad plea. You are an NFL apologist. That's what I was looking for. You're an NFL apologist. You're the only person in the country that doesn't understand how powerful and dominant the NFL is. <sighs> you're something. No, I, I like NFL. I like Sundays. They got one day a week. Okay, we'll, we'll slide in Mondays. As a matter of fact, I'd rather watch Red Zone and play fantasy football. I don't even watch games anymore. Boom. Argue with that. You know Argue what? It, with it, that, it proves brother. a point. It shows you how dominant it is. You don't even care about the results of specific games. You're all wrapped up into your own team. By the way, you're, you're Croatia. See, because you're speaking so negatively about the NFL. Croatia oh losing already. Five minutes in, one nothing. God save the queen, so pal. Now God you're, you're, save you're the going queen. out of country. You're you're you're, <laughs> you're hoping a country loses because you're an NFL apologist. No, I'm hoping oh, a country loses that you're rooting for because you're you're bothering me now. Sports fans and and Ryan Hollins, the sun is shining, the temps are rising, summer's officially here. Grab your friends, blast some tunes, ignite those coals because weather like this waits for absolutely no one. Kingsford charcoal, start something. Eight 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 say ESPN eight 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 seven two nine three seven. Seven six. Let's go to Corey in South Carolina. Corey, you're on ESPN Radio. Yeah, I got to back up my boy Ryan here. I think the reason that the people don't like super teams is because it's not their team. Um, mm. You look at Golden State and tell me what Golden State did wrong. They drafted Draymond. They drafted Steph Curry. They drafted Clay Thompson. They developed them and put them in a system where they could thrive. And I don't think Golden State, lose, Corey. I don't think Golden State did anything don't wrong. Off. Don't cut them off. I'm talking. I don't Let think they did talk. anything wrong, including Gosh, signing man. Kevin Durant. My issue is that Kevin Durant would join a team that won 73 games and was one win away from winning the championship the year before. Of course, they're going to win the title when he goes there. Okay, but you're telling me if Dan Marino had a chance to go and win a Super Bowl. He wouldn't have done it? Yes. <laughs> yes, he would. Facts. Speak that facts, brother. Speak I mean, your just saying, facts. If the New York Knicks <laughs> develop Christoph Porzingis and two other guys mm. and then LeBron comes inside, Ooh. you're not still going to be – you're going to say that that's bad for the NBA? But, uh, but this – you're missing the point, guys. No, he won't. He you, never you're will. Miss, you're missing oh. the point. <laughs> Golden State was the championship team before – Kevin Durant went there. Yeah, if the Knicks if the Knicks are winning championships, which God knows I can't envision happening in my lifetime, but if the Knicks are winning championships, <laughs> do I think it makes sense oh, for the best player, the second best player in the world to come and join that team? No. And as a fan of the game, you stepping would, back oh, from being a fan God. of the Knicks, oh, I prefer that it wasn't that way. I prefer that it wasn't that way. They won the championship this year and then lost it next year to Golden State. And then sign LeBron the year after they lost it, that would be a problem. I don't think it'd be he a problem. He would be so happy. I he don't would think, be I don't so, think it's oh, good Dave, for the league. Dave, you're something else. I don't think it's good for the league. If you, Dave, the key in what, you, what you're saying right now is you don't think it's realistic. 
And because your of course team it's not isn't realistic. Winning, it's the Knicks. They're the starting to trade the, Burke and Courtney Lee. Side. You're missing so, the point. Hey, don't talk about you're my missing... guy Courtney Lee. By the way, don't talk. Don't talk about my guy Courtney Lee. You want him? You, would, you, would, you, you can't if and you, I, that's my dude. You should be. You should be so privileged to have Courtney Lee on your roster. Okay, he's a three and D guy, and they don't grow on trees. You can win with three and D guys. Okay, what's up, C Lee? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Why do you penalize a team because they stepped out like all thirty of the other teams in free agency? after drafting well and improved their team. Isn't the goal to improve? So they've actually achieved something. I'm not that blaming they set Golden to State. You're missing, mis- you are if, missing the well, point, well, Ryan. You are. I'm not, no, I'm not you blaming know, Golden are. State. I'm blaming the system, the way that someone who's the second best player would join the best team. So why would you get rid of the system? I, I don't understand how you say, Dave, there's something wrong with the system, or you say there's something wrong with the league. That's absolutely ridiculous just because guys have freedoms now? Guys are exercising their freedom? I, I can't believe you. How many teams are irrelevant right now in the NBA? Completely irrelevant. 15? By choice. By not, choice. Not by you choice. You why? Because they have chose to tank. Philadelphia chose to tank. They've been irrelevant for a long time because they chose to tank. Phoenix has chose to tank. These teams are choosing to be bad. And you don't think and there's something broken? The fan base. You don't think there's something broken with it with a league that is allowing multiple teams to lose games intentionally to fight for the number one pick? Listen, listen. The problem is you're looking at the players. And the problems are the organizations and the way they run them. And they should have a choice of how they run them. And if an organization should have a choice of how they run them, because they're tanking, you're not looking at tanking as a problem. The of problem course I look at tanking as a problem. And you're, no. Okay, so why are you pointing at the players? It's not my fault that your New York Knicks chose to tank. Your New York Knicks chose to throw the towel in. Don't blame Kevin Durant because your team ain't run well. Because that's what you're doing right now. Uh, listen, I think Golden the NBA State is great. I doing... think that it could be better. I think that it could be better. A lot better. And a hard cap, you're I think, would change else. a lot you're of some, it. You're, uh, looking, you're looking at the wrong person. You're looking at the wrong things right now. Because if the, you, I tell you one thing. If the New York Knicks had – and you could have drafted Steph Curry – you could have drafted Steph. You could have made moves for Clay Thompson. He was a late pick. You could have got Draymond in the second round. If you had have drafted better and gotten those guys, Kevin Durant would have joined you. So, blah, you're talking about drafting? The guy should have a choice, and your team made poor moves after poor move after poor move. So don't say it's bad for the NBA. What's bad for the t- NBA is your poor-run franchise or your tanking team. You're okay. right. My poor run franchise is Tell bad for me. the NBA. Would be nice if they could actually compete every once in a while. Steve in Ohio. Steve, you're on ESPN Radio. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. What's up, Steve? Um, so I, you know, I think the NBA. I'm going to side with you. I think you know the super teams are not a good thing for the NBA. I do like the fact that the players have options. I just, I, I to me, it was the NBA is more fun to watch when you have more teams competing night in and night out. And I think that, you know, the, the the villain got too big in this one, I think. Um, I think, you know, when you have the Warriors, they were already winning championships, and now they'll just continue to win more and more championships. And I think that there has to be some sort of balance of power between the top and the bottom of the NBA that, you know, it's, it's more fun when you have teams that can come in and, and have a chance to beat a good team rather than having it already be, you know, kind of almost set in stone. You say to that, Ryan Hollins. I, 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 listen, man, I want to address the bigger problem at hand. I played 10 years in the NBA, and no matter what roster was I on, when we were young, old, talented, uh, winning, losing, we always stepped out as players to win the game, to compete, to fight. Why? Because our fans meant something. The game of basketball came along with pride. And now you call these teams super teams – but you got teams, and I will refer to, refer to the tanking teams, that absolutely throw in the, ty- the, the, the towel for a draft pick or not. When I was in Charlotte, we were a losing team, but guess what? We came out and fought, and you would have a dogfight out of us night in and night out. And we attempted to win as much as we could. We just didn't have the talent because we were a young expansion to the NBA. Now, when you have a franchise or a market that just throws in the towel, these teams look like super teams because your team doesn't want to spend the money. Your team doesn't want to compete. So should you blame Golden State or should you blame your team for not going after it? 
the Houston Rockets are the only team, if I'm not mistaken, in the NBA last year other than o- Houston Rockets, Oklahoma City, that said, we're going at Golden State's head. Everybody, including your New York Knicks, took their tail and tucked it between their legs and said, we'll fight another day. A lot so of teams know they can't compete against them. Well, is, is that good? That but teams, how do we look are, at- teams are willing to take their tail between their legs and say, you know what, we're not going to go all in now. We're going to wait until the, the, the time is right for us. You can't even try to compete with this team right now. LeBron, they tried. They couldn't compete. It was comical. Houston did everything they could. You say Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City wasn't competitive. Oklahoma City was, was, was they were a joke. They couldn't get by but Utah. Could, there was no, one team. There was one City, team in Dara Mori that said, you know what? We are all in to try and beat this Golden State Club. My point is Oklahoma City went all in, and they gave their fans something to cheer for. My guy Whitey Gleason said, you could have had a LeBron James in New York, but you didn't make yourself attractive enough. And he has a great point there. You didn't make yourself. Why don't we take accountability to the teams? Uh, so you're talking about this new school super team mentality? Take the middle of the pack. Why are the guys, why are free agents like Bellinelli just available in free agency to go and join Philadelphia? Why are certain guys uh, just available at the deadline or on the trading block that can play? Why are teams blowing up their teams a month into the season? And you want to blame Golden State? Golden State had not a game against the Phoenix Suns. I'm not Golden State. I don't know how many Suns. times I have to tell you. you I'm are. not blaming. No, I'm not. No. Well, you're saying I am. I'm not blaming you're Golden State. You're saying it's bad for this. You're blaming the NBA. You're blaming the NBA. Yes. You're blaming the NBA. I, I think the pointing, NBA is broken. I, I th- and I think that the commissioner but, would admit that, that he doesn't want a team. Going into a season every year, do you want to know who's going to win the championship? I don't mind it. It's part of greatness. I like when Shaq and Kobe were doing it. I didn't mind when the Celtics were doing it. Yeah. I don't mind it when, when Michael the, Jordan was when there. When were the Celtics were you, going were you in every season and you Michael knew they were going to win the title? That, that, that's not true. The were Celtics and Lakers battled Jordan? out. Bill Russell has 11 straight rings. Are you it, kidding it me? 60 He's years ago. straight championship. You couldn't even name me another so team was it in the bad league for, why 60 it, years ago. It was a team in like Rochester. Why the Lakers were in Minneapolis. It was completely different. Why wasn't it bad for the league then? Why wasn't it bad for the league then? This is part of greatness. Instead of appreciating greatness, you're complaining. This the, we're watching this Golden State Warriors as the greatest team of all time, and you're sitting back and complaining instead of pointing out the rest of the pack who is choosing not to compete. And my well, why are they not competing? Because the they know they have no chance to, to win. Oklahoma City. The only team that went all in and pushed their so chips in the middle of the Wigan, table was was Houston, a, and I respect that a lot. But that's the Amen. only team that would consider doing it. Hey, man, as a former professional athlete, I can never accept you telling me I'm just going to lose in a city. I don't – in a season, I don't care who's on my roster. I'm coming out to compete and go after it. And as a as a fan, you deserve more to see your team go at it. And to say that you're not going to make the correct roster changes or moves or like a team like Chicago that just sat Lopez, Justin Halliday, and the rest of those guys and said, we're not even going to put a product on the floor? That's disrespectful, dog. All right, well, let me, let me ask you a question. In. The way the, the NBA is currently in. constituted, the way the NBA is currently constituted, would you? what's your team? What do you root for? I don't have a team anymore. Ten years in the game, you don't have a team. I don't All root right. for any NBA team. I want to see good basketball like you, but I'm not going to complain when I see things that happen. Right, and I fair understand enough. So just, a just, LeBron sweep is a fluke. Let, let's say I you're a – I'm just going to pick a team. I'm going to say you're a Lakers fan, okay? You root for the L.A. Lakers. Would you rather okay. see the Lakers go 37 and, and 45 or would you rather see the Lakers go 19 and 61 and get the number one pick in the draft? I would rather my team go out and compete. That's the old NBA that I knew and I grew up cheering. I was once upon a time a Lakers fan watching Eldon Campbell, Sedale Threat, Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel. Those are some of my favorite all time Lakers squads and those weren't championship teams. Yeah, but, but they were I knew playoff they had teams. Talent. I knew they were committed. We didn't win it, but it doesn't matter. My team competed. You can walk. If anybody wants to spend money, you can get in the playoffs next year. But these teams are choosing to tank. That's a problem with the tanking. Okay, and the league is addressing that. So when Chicago was sitting guys out, Adam Silver made the call and put those messages in like, yo, get these bad guys back activated on your roster. That's bad for our sport. So how do you say that basketball or, or Commissioner Silver isn't trying to address these things? At I, hand? Think, I think and he is, but it doesn't mean it's not broken. Season. I think he and is trying to address it, but I think that the system right now is broken. I think you have a, I think I, you have I a lot of issues because the regular season for a lot of teams is meaningless. 
The regular season for Golden State meant nothing. You knew they were going to win in the postseason. Houston got the one seed. It was a competitive series. It was the only time they were tested the entire postseason. And for me, I wish that Kevin Durant, I know a lot of people disagree with this, I wish that Kevin Durant never went to Golden State, stayed in OKC, and tried to beat a team that he led 3-1 the year prior to joining. I got no problem with it. You should have made your team more attractive. Because guess what? KD didn't just walk into the Warriors. KD looked and made a business decision that was best for himself and his family. And if that, that could have been in Washington, if it could have been in L.A., if it could have been in New York or Orlando, Kevin Durant would have made that decision, Dave. So, I, 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 I like, we're pointing at the wrong person. We're pointing at the wrong things. We're looking at the wrong things because Draymond Green is aggressive in recruiting his other guys. Why aren't your stars going out and recruiting and making calls? I don't know. I don't even have stars to recruit stars. Uh, as a Knicks fan, I don't even have stars to to potentially recruit. Uh, you you don't have Kristaps Porzingis? Don't do that. Don't throw no pity party like you don't have Kristaps Porzingis, one of the most dynamic big men that we have ever seen play a game. Now, granted, he's still young, but a guy seven foot three who can nice dribble, player. shoot threes, and it's the next Dirk Nowitzki. So don't give me that pity party right now. Would you Dave. admit he's better don't than Paul that. George? Would you Would you admit he's better than Paul George? Potential too. Uh-huh. Potential too. Right now, no, but potential you're something else. 888-ESPN, 888-729-3776. We continue with your calls. NBA, update you on on World Cup soccer, where Croatia, because Ryan is being difficult, is losing one nothing. Discuss it already here, ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Hi, I'm Bryce Harper. Join me and the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using T-Mobile's hashtag Hats Off for Heroes. When you share your photo or video with hashtag hats off for heroes, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. So America, keep posting with hashtag hats off for heroes and T-Mobile will keep giving. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Official licensee of Major League Baseball Players Association. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. That is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Dave Rothenberg, Ryan Hollins filling in all week. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Now that it's warming up, and it certainly is, it's time to get out to the stadium and catch a few ball games or take your lady to a show or her favorite concert. She will love it. The official ticket partner of ESPN has you covered. Go to vividseats.com slash ESPN for your exclusive discount offer. 888-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Supplemental NFL draft, Ryan Hollins. New York Giants took a cornerback out of uh, Western Michigan in the third round. I know that moves the needle for you. Uh, I, I I don't know what relevance that is. I, I, I hope the young man has a bright and successful career, but I, I would like to read a tweet. I would like to read a, a special tweet because I, I, I think you, you're just really on your high horse right now, and I love this point that was made. Do you, do you mind me reading the tweet? Probably, but go ahead. So my guy, Whitey Gleason, legend up in Sacramento radio, he's ESPN Sacramento, said, has there ever been parity in the NBA in the 80s? Only four teams won titles. L.A. got five. Boston got three. Philly got one. And Detroit got one. And the NBA thrived, Dave. To you, he, they thrived. Then the Bulls won six in eight years. And the league got even more popular. Gosh, drop the mic and walk off. No, you know why you don't drop, drop the, the mic. mic? Pick the, you should you should bend down, pick up the mic, and get back on stage. You know why? <laughs> because these teams were why? these teams were put together the way that no one has an issue, right? No one, no, there was no monster free agent signings. Larry Bird wasn't signing from Detroit to to Boston and and moving. To help them win. That was their team. They made great trades. They got McHale. They got Robert Parrish, right? They bring in Larry Bird. They got a Dennis Johnson. They built it genuinely. The I didn't have an issue. I didn't even mind. I thought they were unbelievably likable Golden State until they brought in Kevin Durant. And from that moment on, I found them to be the NBA villain. So let me let me ask you because what, what it seems like, and I really I want your honest question. Uh-huh. I want your honest answer. I'm going to give you the honest question. You give me the honest answer. Do you fear change? Because change is the only way that you get better. You got to try new things out. You got to experiment. You got to be free. Do, do you fear change, Dave? Because I, I, I don't think love you change. Fear change. I don't love change. 
I don't love change. But my issue with Kevin Durant. Oh, my gosh. I, if he would have gone to any other team, I would have had no issue with it. He mm-hmm. joined forces with a team that was already the best team in the world. So how much credit A, am I going to give him? And how much excitement am I going to have for a team that won the championship without him and had the best record in the history of the game without him prior to that? Well, you're you're not – keep in mind they lost the championship when he joined. Granted, they beat him, but he made the – he didn't make an emotional decision. See, back back in the days – back in the days, and and I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to know what those days were like – you just made the, oh, this is just what I'm supposed to do. You never really evaluated the landscape of maximizing yourself as a brand and a talent in the small window in which you play in the NBA. Because, Dave, for any athlete, I was blessed to play 10 years, but one slip on a banana peel and it could have been my last day, my last day or year playing. So why not maximize what you have to the best of its ability and not die like this hero or soldier going, I tried my hardest for 10 years in the NBA and I didn't get a ring. Why? I'm not saying you have to stay on an island. I'm not saying you have to stay on an island and not get into a better situation. I just, uh, me personally, I have an issue with him going to a situation which is already ready made. He went to to a team team that was already a championship caliber club. Yeah, I, I don't buy it. I don't. I, I don't understand why a guy in his prime can't take control of his life. He can do whatever you he don't wants. Like change. He can. I know you and probably he did. wear the same. I know you probably wear the same underwear from ten years out. You drive the same car. You you stay in the same spot. You say they take the same route to work every day. But Kevin Durant didn't fear change, and it's good for our sport because you're going to see guys making moves and going around. And these are player moves. These aren't team moves. And like I said earlier, the problem ain't the player. The problem is the organizations. It's the bottom half of the league. And don't blame the top dog. See, I can't come in as a as a former athlete and say, and a guy that played 10 years in the league and competed with some of the best, and say, no matter who you are, we weren't going to compete. Listen, when Shaquille O'Neal was on the team, in Miami, and the Miami Heat were champs. It didn't matter. We were the Charlotte Bot, and we went and competed as hard as we could. When Kobe Bryant was on the Lakers, we gave them everything we could. Okay, when LeBron James played for the Miami Heat with three superstars in there, you, we were at their heads. Now, maybe we didn't win, but we came out to compete, and that's all our fans ask. So how you – oh. Oh, Phoenix, Phoenix, Golden State, you can coach. We don't need Kerr, and we're not going to go hard. Man, I tell you, if I was Phoenix and I saw Kevin Durant and Eagle Dollar drawing up plays in the huddle and Steve Kerr sitting so quietly on the sideline with his legs crossed, we're going after heads that night. I don't care who we are. And that's the problem with the NBA is this lax. Uh, hey, guys, we're going to throw in a towel this season. What? I'm a competitor, dog. That's a problem. D- D- Dave, I, don't, I can't understand you. Frank in Kentucky. Frank, you're on ESPN Radio. Thank thank you, man. I'm about to put my fist through the window right now on so many levels. But, I mean, there's so many (laughs) arguments within the arguments. And the main thing is you say don't don't blame the player. Okay, well, don't blame the player because they got a life to live and they got to make decisions for themselves and their families. But after the decision is made, I can blame the player if the player doesn't want to play. And it seems like we have a league filled with players that are making decisions for their families, making decisions for their lives. But at the end of the day, when the rubber hits the floor, people don't want to play. And in terms of people tanking, why didn't the NBA put a cap on losses or wins? Say, hey, you don't win 50% of your games, you can't even be in the draft. At least elevate the bottom Yeah, but then how how are you supposed to ever get better? I mean, you can't punish teams like that. If you're a bad team, you're a bad team. There's nothing you can do to win 50% of your games. So now you don't. You don't improve okay, well, by getting a Okay, if you're a bad pick. team, you're a bad team. But, okay, Cleveland was a bad team, and they still made it to the finals with one player. And that's the problem. There was only one player. And Kevin Kevin Love played great a couple years ago. He didn't do anything this year. You could even say J.R. Smith played great, and he, and he totally fell apart. So it ain't on, it's not on the players or how much they're getting paid. It's on the players actually playing. And who cares about yeah, but super you have teams? To, no, but you, you have to understand, my brother – as a guy on a roster and you're trying to play your hardest because that's our job, it's our livelihood. We, whatever, you're not going to see an athlete going and say, oh, I'm going to stink it up tonight. When a coach is told from upstairs not to put his best lineup on the floor or they keep giving you 
G League guys and those guys are still green and, and, and new and, and getting thrown in a roster, it's really hard to win. Or you're a guy like Lopez with the Bulls or Justin Holiday, and you can actually have a chance to win some games and you're sent home in street clothes or you're going to get a coach's decision not to play, not on your performance, just because the team wants to experiment. They call it experimenting and lose games. That's out of your control as a player. And that's what's tough because, guys, trust me, we're on the floor competing and giving it our all. And it's just disheartening when the organizations are not giving it their all at the same time. And we're yelling and screaming at each other to compete and win and go at it. And then on the other hand, it's not. And I, and I hear what you're saying. I don't think it would work as far as the draft lottery reform that other teams don't get their picks, but th- something has to change. I don't know quite what the answer is because right now the worst spot from an analytical standpoint in the NBA is to just miss the playoffs. The Nuggets, they Absolutely. got Michael Porter Jr., w- which is, could be really good. But if you just miss the playoffs, it's the worst spot, which means we gave it our all, but yet we're going to get a really poor draft pick. Right, Dave? Yeah, 100%. Same thing in the NFL. The worst thing is going 8-8. Eight and eight. You don't want to be 8-8. Eight and eight. You don't want to be 9-7 and seven and miss the postseason. You want to get in or you want to be bad and get the big-time pick. 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. Let's go to Jeff in Hollywood. Jeff, you're on ESPN Radio. Yeah, um, Ryan, I'm with you on this, but basically – both of you guys are missing the issue. The reason why you're even having this conversation right now is because of the limitations that are placed on salary in the NBA. And why are they doing that? The only team, the only leagues, you, I don't even know your name, man, um, the moderator. I, I, I didn't catch it. But Dave, Dave Roethlisberger, you, you got to remember him. Dave speaking the third okay, person. Okay, Roethlisberger, okay. But check this out, Mr. Roethlisberger. You are afraid of change because <laughs> games like baseball that excluded black people from the game don't have a salary limitation. Football well, they have a, they have a luxury tax the same way the same way the NBA does. Ninety percent of the players in the in the NBA and the NFL are African American. Why are there limitations on how much they can make? How, how is, it, how is this a, a ra- that, Jeff? Jeff, how is this a racial issue with you? Only really? you would. We, only you, really. It's embarrassing. Goodbye, Jeff. I mean, how is this a racial issue? How do you turn it to that? There's nothing to do. Look, baseball's guaranteed contracts. NBA is guaranteed contracts. NFL is not guaranteed contracts. I mean, what are you talking about? This has nothing to do with race I, whatsoever. I, I think. No, no. Let's not make let's not make this today a, a race deal. But he's saying baseball has had these dynasties like the Yankees in the past, and they're just they're going to spin, spin, spin. So why the does it NBA look like baseball is thriving right now? Towards this, and and it's a well. Well, I, I told you baseball sucks. I mean, we all know that. I, I fall asleep during a baseball game where I go like it's like a party. It's like white noise behind you hanging out with your buddies. You know, that's my that's what I, that's how I feel, and a lot of people feel about baseball. But I understand what he's saying is that why does there seem now to be a problem that NBA players are trending or getting paid or making money and you got a guy like Jeff Van Gundy who says no I want a hard cap don't let these guys make money for the average guy who wants to be rewarded to stay with his team they can pay him what they want to pay him you know you see Portland is rewarding their guys for staying uh, the Nuggets are are going over the cap to keep their guys and they're in Jokic and their young nucleus of guys there and whether they're winning or not it's just good for players so he's saying let's not complain because the NBA is is doing this now ultimately ultimately win lose or draw let's reward these guys because we are the money and let them push over the salary cap don't limit these guys because i get the hard cap but nobody controls you from your job and says well dave you know what next year no matter how well you can do we're gonna cap the money that you can make oh you you did excellent with the ratings but we're, we're gonna cap you because you're too good and we don't want you going to another show that could be really really good no let's see the best product at hand brother I want to see Dave Rothenberg and Ryan Hollins excel. I let's make this super team. People want to see it. All right, Ryan Hollins, it. you check things all the time. You check your email. I know you do. You've been checking it all show, which I haven't said anything, but I, I've seen you oh or gosh. or your your social media. 
But Discover <laughs> asks, what about checking something as important as your credit score? Well, Discover makes it quick and easy with their credit scorecard, which is free for everyone, even if you're not a customer. See your FICO credit score and other important credit information. And once you know your score, you should check to see if your current credit card is the best fit for you. Learn more at discover.com slash credit scorecard limitations apply. 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. And for the record, um, the NBA is 74% African American. The NFL is 68%. So I don't know where this 90% number comes up. 888-SAY-ESPN. We'll discuss the Giants third round selection in the supplemental draft. We'll really break it down. Right, Ryan? We'll do that next. ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. <laughs> Ow, ow. Yep, you guessed it. I'm a speed bump. So I've got one job. I slow you down. So imagine how I feel about Geico, who does way more. Like, not only could they save you money on car insurance, but they've been around for over 75 years, giving people fast and friendly claim service. Ow, ow. Plus, they got a nifty mobile app that gives you 24-7 access. Ow, ow. Just doing my job, buddy. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! It is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Dave Rothenberg, Ryan Hollins filling in for Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN app. Ryan, you can surprise a friend or a loved one today with a bouquet from 100flowers.com. When you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, Ryan, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. Go to 100flowers.com slash ESPN. So here's an update for you afternoon or morning, depending on where you are in the world of sports. England up one nothing on Croatia at halftime. I apologize um, to you for that, giving you that result, which I know yes, you're you for should. Croatia. You um, Roger Federer has already been bounced by Kevin Anderson, five sets in Wimbledon. Rafael Nadal and Juan Del Potro are in the fifth set right now uh, on serve at Wimbledon. And John Isner has a one-set lead on Milos Ronic, uh in the other quarterfinal and Wimbledon. So we're all up to date on everything going on around the world of sports. Yeah, around the world, pretty much sums it up. Hey, how how big of a loss is that federal? Like, how? Give me it's a shocking. basketball analogy. Ugh. Basketball. Give me a team. This is who beating who. Um, New York Knicks getting in the playoffs. Is, uh, is, well, yeah, so why do you have to go there? Because I made fun of Croatia. <laughs> you don't even know anybody in Croatia. Um, how big is is Kevin Anderson beating Federer? Well, here's the thing. Not only okay. is it Kevin Anderson beating Roger Federer, it's Kevin Anderson trailing two sets to none and then coming back to beat Roger Federer three straight sets. Oh. So, I mean, it's it, it's almost like saying whatever team, a, a, an elite team had a 24-point lead in the second half and let it get away and lost. So, I don't know, let's say Golden State, because Federer is at okay. the Golden State elite level, had a 24-point lead in the third quarter over... Who's a, 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 a very average team? Now, now, mind you, this is game seven of a playoff series. So, oh, so is this guy because it's, it's, it's a quarterfinals? Are, let, all right, here's what it is. Is he a young star in the making? I mean, gosh, I, average No, he's guy. not, he's not, I mean, he's not just, young at all. And he's not, he's better than average. It's wrong. Here's what it is. Golden okay, State leads by 24, third quarter at home over the New Orleans Pelicans, and they, and they fall apart and they lose the game. That's that's mm. what just happened. Pelicans are they're fine. Mm. Utah Jazz, right? Okay. They're they're fine. They're not championship caliber team. And this is what just happened. Mm. On the biggest stage. Mm. The mm. biggest stage. And that leads me to tell you this. Get triple action protection for optimal engine performance with Shell V Power Nitro plus premium gasoline. 888-SAY-ESPN, 888-729-3776. What do you say we take another call or two, Ron? I know you, I know you love the calls, don't you? I, I do. The, the, the callers are so honest with you today, and that's all we ask, because obviously I'm not enough, Dave. I'm not enough. <laughs> I, I need a call. I, I, I love the support for the callers. I, clearly I'm not enough to talk to you today. Steven in Orlando. Apologies. Steve, you're on ESPN Radio. Appreciate it, Steve. Hey, uh... I'm a big time Orlando Magic fan, and uh, you know, I, we're, I heard y'all talking about the parity with the NBA. It should be to where you can't sign three, four guys on max contract. There should be 
one guy that should be able to qualify for a quote unquote max contract because you look at the way it's set up, how is Otto Porter Jr. making the same amount of money that LeBron James is making? You want these superstars to stay on teams and not just go to the next best thing with, with other players, make it to where they they're gonna take a, a financial huge loss, not just, you know, that super max deal because they're still making, you know, an incredible amount of money. If you take away the max contracts, I think a lot more players would stay put because they know that they can't just get three, four of the same caliber players on the same team. May I address and say, what if that's your job? There's only one big dog, and there's one boss who gets paid millions, and the rest of you guys struggle. The rest but of everybody else struggles. That's next to the call, Steve. But so, nobody, so that's nobody what he's proposing. Struggling. No, no. He's he asked about one max, one big contract, and the rest of us make five point three million. So that's an NBA. That's an NBA struggling. That's the NBA struggling. So, I mean, were we really proposing? You would not accept that at your job. Why should NBA players accept that at theirs? You I don't see these guys as struggling to find where their next meal is going to come from. Do you? I don't. I don't think this is uh, much of an issue at all. Here's what we're going to do, more Ryan. Than one guy. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick that. this up. We're going to pick we gonna this do? up tomorrow at one Eastern. In for Stephen A. Rothenberg and Hollins back tomorrow. ESPN Radio, ESPN app. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.